Okay, there we go. It's official now. So I'm Dr. Ward. Welcome to fall 2023. Uh, this is stat one, section 32, course ID 71852. And I'm right now in our Canvas course shell. Um, Hopefully you guys have had a chance to kind of look through that welcome orientation video. We're gonna quickly try to go through stuff. I have changed our Canvas, so recent announcements will appear on our homepage, which I think is kind of nice. Um, like right now, it's a good reminder that we need a note taker for this class. Okay, so if anybody is interested, and I really wanna encourage you to consider signing up to be a note taker. I used to always do that when I was a student before there were even incentives. And now there are incentives like getting um, priority enrollment or service hours. And you guys probably know how difficult it can be to get a class you want. So getting priority enrollment is like a big deal and it's really super easy. So please consider applying as a note taker. Um, I have a table here of you know, kind of frequently used links. I've got information about myself here, including like our office hours or student hours. Um, I am only on Zoom this semester. Really, you you guys can call, text, or email me anytime, okay? Um, my cell is probably the best way to reach me. So if you want to put that in your own phone and just, you know, give me a quick text, whatever. Um, don't be surprised if I get back to you like two in the morning, if you, you know, text me and I'm awake, <laughs> you never know. Um, I turn my phone volume down when I'm sleeping. So you literally can reach out anytime. Okay. Um, and I know with, you know, with math, like when you have a question, you usually want it answered really quickly. So I try to get back and be highly responsive. Okay. Anyways, I want you guys to, you know, kind of browse and look through on your own time, but I want to hit some of the highlights. Um, here's a link to our syllabus. One of the big things highlighted here is all of our assessments already have a universal accommodation of double time. Okay, so if you are a student who has an existing accommodation for like time and a half or double time, it's already there. Um, I still encourage everyone, you know, who needs an accommodation to reach out to the DSPS office. But um, I know sometimes like you're waiting for like doctor information or, you know, whatever. So it's already done for everybody. And then, you know, this link takes you to our syllabus. I already have it pulled up. So this is something else for you guys to really look through on your own time, save a copy, refer back to it, because you're not going to remember all of this stuff. You know, it's got all of the kind of class information here. Um, I'm still letting people in. Welcome, welcome, if you're just joining us. Um, huge congratulations for all of you guys for making it here. Um, I know a lot of us just never felt like we belonged in college. Um, so yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal just being here. And huge first thing I want to let all of you know, because I know a lot of people have like math anxiety or they don't like math or they have some sort of negative association with math. You guys can all do this, literally. Every single one of you can be successful in this class. Every single one of you. I've really set this class up so it's so doable. And, you know, you just come to class, ask questions. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And anybody, everybody can do this class. So, um... Lots of cool quotes and stuff. Um, we have a free textbook. You know, you can click here. Where's this gonna open? <laughs> and it takes you 
to this free textbook. Which is right here. I need to change my default um, browser. I also have a link in our Canvas, so I'll show you that. But I also had it linked here on the syllabus. Notice our course grading, 50% of your grade is your homework. Again, so that's like one of the ways that it, this course is so do doable. If you do all your homework, you really only need another 20% of the points to pass, right? To pass with a C at 70%. So if you did all your homework, <laughs> 20 more percent, almost by accident, you're going to get that, right, from your exams and quizzes. You're going to pass. So, I mean, oftentimes I have students who are like, wow, like at first I was worried about passing, but now I'm like, what do I need to get it A, you know, because it's totally doable to pass if you just stick it out, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Do your homework, which is, again, totally doable. There's not like a million things in your homework, a million problems. Okay. Um, learning process, how that works, student learning outcomes. You're going to learn how to do probability and statistics in this class. Uh, probability is the study of chance. And then statistics, and I actually have a nice, definition here. I'll refer to this. A branch of math that deals with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. So it's all this kind of study of data. And so since, you know, the advent of computers, especially, being able to analyze and study data has become very important because we collect it pretty much everywhere. Uh, no cheating, no cheating. Um, let me just say this. When I think back to when I graduated with my bachelor's, it was a big deal. And, um, you know, that day, that walk, walking at your graduation. I want you guys to have that feeling that you earned your degree also, because education is one of the very, very few things that can never, ever be taken away from you. Once you earn a degree, it's yours for the rest of your life. So make it really count for something, you know, anything valuable, you really have to work hard for and you earn it, you earn it legitimately and with integrity. And that's what makes it worthwhile and special. Okay, so that's what I really want for you guys. Um, you know, it's possible to cheat, I feel like, in any class, uh, in some way, small or big. Um, I feel like it's kind of more difficult in stats because there's so many numbers and um yeah, of course, it's going to be possible. So I'm just, I'm really encouraging you not to go down that path. And if you have before, today's a new day. I want to encourage you to really say, from here forward, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because also, just um, think about, you guys are all, you know, going on to earn certificates and degrees and become, you know, parts of our society that are truly important, right? And we want people with integrity. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get on a plane and fly with a pilot who cheated on his or her exam or see a medical doctor who cheated through medical school or drive over a bridge that an engineer cheated on, you know, had cheated during school. I mean, you know, and, and it's not always just life and death, but we look up toward people like our teachers, right? Um, you know, one of the things I often think of 
is if you wouldn't want it for your own child, you know, would you want it for yourself? Right? Like you don't want, if you have children or you plan to have children or you have nieces and nephews or you have good friends who have children, you would not encourage them to cheat in school. And that's because you know inside it's wrong. So don't do that to yourself either. You know, you're actually hurting yourself if you do that. So anyways, I can talk on and on about this stuff. Um, also, I have to say, if I catch someone cheating, I'm pretty brutal because I just have zero tolerance. Um, you know, I have done everything from zero on an assignment to failing a class to trying to get somebody expelled. I, you know, because sometimes I think people think like I'm too nice. I don't think there's such a thing. Um, but I just, you know, there's no second chance because no one should be cheating, period. Um, and we all know that going in. So I'm really emphasizing it now. There's no cheating allowed in college. Okay, I'm just going to move on. Uh, be nice. Have respect for everyone. Um, I've got tons of resources everywhere. This is another good, you know, phone number, an email, you know, that you might want to put in your phone. Um, you know, so here's the thing, right? I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, ah, if I need them, like, I'll just Google what's LBCC, like student help desk or student technology or something. But what if the problem you're having is going online to begin with? right? So then you're probably going to want to call them because you're having some problem, maybe connecting or whatever. So I'm just saying, it's kind of nice to have that phone number in your phone also. Again, if you need accommodations, I recommend that you reach out to DSPS. And I'm very happy to make any accommodations that are needed. I've already received some letters. And again, we need a note taker. And then we already have the universal double time. Um, lots of other stuff. The very last page. You guys, I totally recommend you guys print out, keep handy, because you're not going to remember. And, you know, one of the things I always suggest, this is true for all of your college classes. Like before you ask your professor, check your syllabus. You know, like, hey, Dr. Ward, when's our first exam? You know, I don't remember either. I have to go here and look, right? Same for all of your classes. Or, hey, Dr. Ward, I forget how much your exam's worth. You know, exams are worth 20% of your grade. I don't remember either. I have many classes, et cetera, et cetera. So much like when you have a job, you know, you don't want to go to your boss and ask something that you already have the information somewhere. So I just want to encourage you, this is kind of proper etiquette as a college student. Of course, you can ask me anything, anytime, but I just want to encourage you to get in that habit of looking at your syllabi for your various classes to answer your questions first. And then, hey, I couldn't find it on the syllabus. I tried, you know, can you help me with this? Whatever, like that just comes across way better to your professors. It's it's good to, you know, to do that. Just like I would not say, you know, ask my department head, hey, when's our next department meeting? Because she already gave us that information. I don't remember, but I know how to find it, right? So that's the idea of a syllabus, that it has all of this information about your class. You're not expected to remember it all, but you know you have it there, and it's a good resource to look through first if you have a question. Um, this particular page is so important. I recommend that you print it, and also if you have the cell phone, take a picture, because if you're like me, you know, you're out and about maybe making a doctor's appointment, and it's like, oh, you know, was that an exam day, or, you know, was that a holiday, right? So it's nice to have these handy. All right. And so this is our tentative because, you know, something might change <laughs> schedule. I've got our live Zooms in yellow. I've got the no class days or holidays in pink. Uh, I've got homework due in blue. So notice everything is due like Sunday at 
at night. Okay. All of the like exams and quizzes and practices. The exams are in red. The exams and all of your math homework are in a math learning system called Alex. The exams are in there as well. And just so you know, the exams are open in that software all day on the exam day. We do not meet for Zoom because I'm basically giving you like class time so you can take your exam. You don't literally have to take it during the exam time that, or during you know the class time. I'm giving you all day to take your exam. It opens at 12.01 a.m. and closes at 11.59 p.m. So all of these exams. And so the way it works is like this week, you know, it's the welcome week. We spend a lot of class time just kind of going over administrative stuff and there are going to be students adding late and blah, blah, blah. So I try and keep it pretty light this first week. And then by Sunday at midnight, you guys would have completed something called the prep objective in Alex. And we're going to be talking about that. And then next week, we're going to be discussing chapter one. And by Sunday, you would have complete, you know, you have due homework for chapter one and the quiz for chapter one. And then we have two class periods and we talk about chapter two and the homework and quiz is due by Sunday at midnight, etc. Okay, and there's a practice. It's not required, it's optional. I created it to help you study for the exam and that will close this Sunday at midnight and then 12.01 the exam opens, okay? So that's how our, our schedule works, okay? Feel free again to shout out any questions, especially while we're kind of looking at stuff. Um, this is a link for videos. So after I get the recording for this video, I'll be uploading it here. I have a YouTube channel. I recommend you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then you go to playlists. And go to the Stat One playlist. With flexible royalty free plans, mix and match your assets. So these are all of the videos here. Just close my window. And so as you can see, I already have, you know, lecture videos posted on literally every single chapter. So if you wanted, you know, you can work ahead. All of the homework and quizzes are open early. So you're welcome to work ahead. And there might be times where like, you know, you're gonna be out of town or you have a week where you're focusing more on a different class. And so you wanna do something, you know, in our class early, you can definitely do that. Um, we also have a late policy. So you can also do any work late with basically a 5% late penalty by the not very last day of class, but the day before the final. So uh, by December 10th, all of your Alex work is due. Okay. All right, so in this class, I'm just gonna keep adding stuff to the end. So like right here, there's the, the fall welcome orientation, okay? And then this is the information here about Alex. Well, let's see. Um, so there was a question. Will we ever take our exams during any of our Zoom meetings? And that's a great question. And the answer is no. So I know in a lot of class classes, you know, you come to Zoom and everybody like has to put their camera on and all of that to take an exam. And no. So 
because of equity issues, I don't think, I, I don't agree with forcing students to turn their cameras on. I know there's a large percentage of students who are like housing insecure or possibly homeless um, in different living situations and might not want to turn their cameras on. Um, so I don't require that. So for each one of those exams, you can just do it wherever you want, no camera needed, any time that entire day that it's on the schedule there. Okay. And the final, it's actually going to be on Monday. I have this set aside, like kind of just in case. <laughs> but otherwise, it's on this Monday. All of our exams are on Mondays. Okay. All right, so here I have, you know, links and information on Alex and also that OER textbook is directly linked right here, right? So kind of way easier than on the syllabus. You have to select it and everything. This takes you directly to the textbook. Okay. And then this explains we're going to be using Alex, which is um, an online math learning system. When you first create your account for this class, you get a free grace period or trial period for 14 days. Okay, so I recommend you guys all do that rather than paying for it initially. You just never know. It's just great to take advantage of that free 14 days. Um, so we have a class code and then, you know, you can enter this financial aid code, which will give you the free 14 days. And then before the 14 days are over, then you would need to pay. And if you pay directly in Alex, it is $39.99. Okay. So that's what makes this the low cost because it's below the $40. So I'll show you guys how to do this. You click on that Alex link. And notice their website. It's really just alex.com. And notice how they spell Alex. A-L-E-K-S. Okay. And so up here, they have a sign up new student. And they ask for your class code. So the class code. is right here. And by the way, I know a lot of times students will kind of do this along, you know, with the Zoom, like open another window, and that's totally fine. I'm just saying. Okay. So here we go. This is it. 71852. Okay. So I am not going to be adding this class as a student, but that's what you guys would do. And at some point it will ask you for an access code and that's this green one. And again, I recommend you, you know, copy and paste each portion. Okay. And this gives you kind of the rest of the steps. But really, once you're in, kind of in, and I'm going to pull this up as if I were a student. So you can see what it looks like. Student view. So when you first log in, 
right? This talks about this, you know, computer adaptive, personalized kind of Alex functionality, which we're really only going to be using for the prep objective. So it shows you, here's your main menu. You'll get any notifications up here. This button suggests what to do next. And we're going to start off doing this tools tutorial, which really just walks you through like how to enter stuff, how to undo stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Like how you can enter a fraction. Okay. So you guys will go through all of this. I'm going to skip it. <laughs> And you'll get a congrats, you've completed it. And then you're going to want to take this initial knowledge check. Have paper and pencil available. Right. Alex has a built-in calculator when you need a calculator on a problem. So that's pretty handy. Um, you, you guys do not need to purchase a calculator for this class, although it is handy to have one. We also have a calculator loan program through the Math Success Center. So just an option, but technically you do not need a handheld calculator in this class. There's a tools help if you need help, you can click, I don't know, if you really don't know. So it's gonna ask you like to graph the line, et cetera. How do I plot a point? How do I draw a line? Click on the line button, click one point, click another point, and that's it, okay. like here. Et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this and pretend like I only knew a little bit. Okay, these are the 20 topics of that prep objective. Okay, your initial knowledge check in Alex, that is the 20 topics that, that you know, you're really completing for a grade um, for your prep objective this first week. So let me just pull that back up. Okay. This is the prep objective. Okay, so it's due by Sunday midnight. So notice the shaded part shows what you know. The gray area out here in the outer rim shows what you're going to learn, you know, this first week. So this is the, um, the list of topics here for the prep objective this first week. There's an arithmetic and algebra review and slopes and lines. Okay, and we're going to be talking about this stuff too. So this is your personal Alex Pi. You can always click one of these to get more information. You can also click on the timeline view. Mostly this is for this computer adaptive nature in Alex. And again, we're only using this for this prep objective. That's why it says up next prep objective, 15 of the 20 topics have been completed. And then you can see, you know, homework one, do, quiz, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So when you're ready to can 
continue on with your prep objective. You would click that. It takes you to a learning page. And then you could use the start button when you're ready to answer a question. Um, this shows you how many correct answers you need in a row, five. So you need to do this topic five times correctly in a row. If you do three literally in a row, it'll fill out the five for you though. Okay, if you need an explanation again, you can click back here. Okay, so it'll explain how to do that problem. This is the menu. You can always go back home. Okay. So you've got your pie view, your timeline view. This is the menu. You can also always go to assignments. This lists all your assignments. Okay. So notice like, you know, homework for chapter one, quiz for chapter one. The homework and quiz for chapter one are due September 10th. Due September 10th. Everything, all of the homework and quizzes are already open. They open this morning, including the practice final. <laughs> and notice, you know, oh, I need to change some of these dates. They should be um, this December 10th. You know, the practice exams close the day before, but um, yeah, I got to change some of the, some of the, um, oh no, that's right. Okay. The due dates and then the absolute close date. Let me just see. Yep. And then, okay. Late submission is, you know, a 5% late penalty and then finally due by December 11th. Okay. Okay. I thought I had to change something, but I, but I don't. It's good. It's good. <laughs> you can also click here, and it gives you kind of a different view, and we'll see this on homework too. We'll go back and go over our, this stuff again. So hopefully it's not too overwhelming. But so for now, this week, you want to do that, you know, kind of initial tools tutorial, initial knowledge check. And by Sunday, you just want to complete those 20 topics for your prep objective. Okay. By the way, we'll try to take a break in class like halfway through around like 11 o'clock. Okay. Just look to see what time it is because I know I can rattle on. <sighs> Get some private questions too in the chat. Okay. What else? Um, you can go to student view here for this too. Because I wanted to show something, <laughs> now I forgot what what I wanted to show you. But um, okay, well, so that was how to get into Alex, and then I have this links and resources page with Long Beach City College resources, and then other resources. Um, you know, for Droid phones, there is a free app for a calculator. Uh, which is, you know, more like a um, TI-84, a graphing calculator. Oh, and I got a question. How long have I been a professor? I have been teaching over 25 years. Thanks for asking. Yep, and I'm going to share more about myself in a bit, too. I am. And yesterday was my birthday. <laughs> 
I feel like that's going to play a role in how long I've been teaching, but not really, you know, <laughs> it had nothing really to do with my birthday, but um, yeah. But anyway, so I've got some info here for free calculators. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> right. So I've opened that door now, <laughs> but it's cool. Thanks very much. You know, the thing about these fall birthdays, right? I mean, some days, or some years, like the first day of class is on my birthday. Um, some years we have what's called college day. And, um, you know, it's for all the faculty and staff kind of welcoming back. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's always right around, you know, the start of school. So it's cool. I'm trying to respond to them all here. <laughs> all right. So yeah, and and you know, because even though we can do everything inside Alex, you know, if you think you might be using some of the statistics stuff in your own personal life or maybe in a future career, and I hope you guys do. You know, you might want to learn, like, how do I do that on a handheld calculator? Or how do I do that in Excel? Right? So we're going to learn how to do it in all these different ways anyway. So if you wanted free calculators and stuff, you can do that. Just saying. There's also a free graphing utility you could always use, Desmos. And I've got some other really cool websites. Math is Fun is going to be fantastic. I'll be referring to that one. Okay, so there's that. So there's everything in that table. This is that great big Zoom link, right? That probably most of you clicked to get here. I'm just gonna see, is anybody trying to get in and can't find the link? Let me just double check. Just double checking. Okay, no. All right. So I also have, you know, this little PowerPoint on what math is because I often feel like, you know, in other classes, like if you take like a bio 101, you learn like an introduction to biology. In math and stats, like you normally don't do that, right? You just focus, like you take an algebra class, you just start doing algebra. You take a geometry class, you just start doing geometry. And then you kind of have like no idea, you know, like the bigger picture. So um, it is math. Let me pull this up. My not in presentation mode. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, so all kinds of definitions for what math is, science of numbers, operations, et cetera. Um, a branch of operation and or use of mathematics. This is from Marion Webster Dictionary. Check this out from Wikipedia. Math has generally no accepted accepted definition. There are different schools of thought, particularly in philosophy, that have put forth radically different definitions, all of which are controversial, which I always find fascinating. Like the more we learn about stuff, the more um, kind of philosophical things get. And this is why, by the way, like when people have their PhD, like myself, that stands for Doctor of Philosophy. So, you know, my PhD is actually in math education. And, you know, you might wonder, like, why the philosophy? And it's because it really means we have thought deeply in our area, you know? So um, it's not unusual for things to become controversial. It's about numbers, shapes, symmetry, chance, change, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's among the richest, most wide-ranging, and most useful disciplines. D 
deeply interwoven into all of modern life. Um, I love this quote by Gauss. He was a famous mathematician. Math is the queen and servant of the sciences. Um, there is also controversy over whether or not math was discovered or whether it is man-made. I'm in the man-made or human-made camp. <laughs> um, I think it's a way for us to describe things and look at things and analyze things. And so therefore there's this human component, you know, like when you even think about like, what does it mean to have this kind of like a number two or three, right? You might have kind of, um, so let me grab a pen here. Right, there's three dots. I mean, the dots actually exist. I didn't discover them, but this adjective I'm using to describe them with either a numeral or a word, you know, that's a human made um, idea, a concept. It refers to quantity. So, anyways, um, Oftentimes people think of math as a set of rules, a way of thinking, a language. Some people define it as strictly problem solving. Some people define it as the study of patterns, um, as a truth, as an art even. Um, interesting timeline for the history of math, if you're interested in that. So kind of cool website, you know, on the left, we've got like a mathematical kind of discovery or invention, whichever you prefer, like evidence of counting from 50,000 BCE. And then like what else is kind of going on around that time? So that was Neanderthal man, right? Hieroglyphical numerals in Egypt. And that was use the first use of wheeled vehicles, right? So you can kind of do a little side-by-side -side comparison which is pretty cool, you know, like a 360 degree circle. And that was when right around the Great Wall of China. So kind of cool if you're interested in, um, you know, history and if you're interested in how math developed, right? Um, yeah, just really, I could go into a lot of detail. Um, you know, oftentimes people who go on to study math or become teachers of math take history of math courses. And so there's lots of further detail on all of this, you know, leading like right up to present times. Um, in fact, when Wiles proved Fermat's last theorem, that was a big, big deal. Like I actually remember that. I might have had tears in my eyes because um, that was just a huge, huge advance in math. So, okay. I'm trying to move all these windows here. Let me just go on. Okay. This is more kind of history. Um, so oftentimes people think of math as being in two main branches, branches, pure math and applied math. And for the most part, I think people would agree that pure math was the only kind of sort of, you know, discipline of math up until like say around World War II, when all of a sudden we wanted to become more competitive for national security and, you know, um, not only develop more weapons and, um, you know, things like tanks and, and other, you know, artillery and strategizing, uh, but also like cryptography, how to, you know, have secure communications, all of those sorts of things pushed us to not just kind of playfully discover math for math's sake, but rather to start with a true problem. Like I want to develop, you know, a bomb that will do this or a plane that will do that or whatever. And so applied math was born. Um, there's definitely some overlap and, you know, it seems like still just by pushing forward in math and 
for math's sake and for fun and for thought and hey, what comes next if we, you know, keep pushing the envelope and asking questions, not because we have a specific goal, but simply because we want to know what happens if, and kind of ironically, um, if you do that, we still get useful mathematics for, you know, doing things that we might want to do and not just necessarily war related, but uh, lots of other, you know, useful things um, and applications in every single field, you know, from computer science to medicine, social sciences, you know, just everything. And then, so notice where statistics is Oftentimes in a university, a department of statistics will be in a separate building from a department of math. Sometimes they're the same department, department of math and statistics, like at Long Beach State. So um, kind of interesting. And sometimes people, you know, I don't know, but there's, there's some gray area for how we can think about all of these fields. Um, UC Berkeley is off, often has the top ranked math department in the world. So I thought it might be interesting to show you the research areas that they have there in math. Because um, again, you know, unless you're a math major or maybe a STEM major, you've never been told like, what is math and what do people do? Like we only kind of know arithmetic and algebra, geometry, you know, you've maybe heard of trigonometry and calculus and stuff, but um, these are the main research areas in math at Berkeley. Okay, so algebra, and not just the algebra that, um, sorry, I keep touching and clicking backward. Um, not just the algebra that we start learning in junior high school and high school, but those, that that algebra, by the way, in junior high school and house in high school is just an example of an algebra. And so if you're a, a math major, you go on to study more abstract algebras and operations and sets and things. And so anyways, notice there's probability, right? We're going to be learning about probability in this class. And these are just some of the classes, undergraduate upper division classes. It's cool to even see like some of the names get insight into, you know, the topic areas, Fourier analysis, um, ordinary differential equations, metric differential geometry, elementary differential topology, complex analysis, et cetera. And then some of the um, graduate courses, you know, algebraic structures, combinatorics, groups, rings, and fields, et cetera, et cetera. So just kind of cool. Um, the 2020 math subject classification system has lists 64 mathematical disciplines. Okay, so they have a classification scheme for all of those kinds of like topic areas and things like that. So let me click this link just to give a feel. Let's see. Here we go. So first level areas, you know, linear, multilinear algebra, matrix theory, associative rings, algebras, K theory, topological groups, lie groups, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> That was just clicking on one there in Wikipedia. Interesting statistic, less than 0.01% of people in the USA are mathematicians. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, there are lots of different, you know, professions that one could go in with a math degree. Like, hey, what do mathematicians do? Like if you get your degree in math. Um, so they also go on to work in other fields, astronomy, space exploration, climate study, medicine, national security, robotics, animated fil films, um, business. What else? I'm used to seeing kind of a different page, but I don't know if they updated that. 
maybe I'm thinking of this, like career areas, teaching, actuary, actuarial science, uh, business management, computing, engineering, investment analysis, law, medicine and life sciences, military and public service, service physical science, sales and marketing. Okay. All right. So hopefully that was kind of interesting. And you've already learned something today, right? What time is it? Okay. It's almost straight up 11. So um, let's take a short break and we'll come back. I'm going to type it in the chat too. Um, we'll come back at 11, 12 a.m. Okay, 15 minutes. All right, I'll see you all in a bit. I'm going to pause this recording. It's back. Okay. All right. Um, so there's the welcome orientation video. It's got a lot of the same information and, you know, if you ever wanted to refer back, you can where I go over kind of all of this too. This is our basic meeting place. You guys are definitely gonna wanna stay in touch with the announcements, okay? So you're either gonna wanna log into Canvas every single day to make sure you, know, you haven't missed some important announcement. You can also download the Canvas mobile app. You have a smartphone and you will get notifications if you sign up for them on your phone. So when announcements appear, you know, you'll be notified. That's a good idea. Um, we have 16 weeks this semester, and if you click on modules, this takes you to the weekly modules. So here's week one. All right, so I have the three columns, learn, practice, and like an interaction column. So the discussions are optional. Practicing will be in Alex. And then for learning, right, learn the syllabus. Um, I have lecture notes uploaded. You can click on those. I have this handout, right, attend the live Zooms. And then this first week, get your account using the free financial aid code and complete that tools tutorial. That's how to use Alex. And that initial knowledge check, which is your prep objective. Right, so each week, there will be a welcome announcement, which is a good reminder as to like what week we're in, right? Right now we're in week one. The syllabus also has the dates, you know, if you lose track of like what week we're in. So that's, you know, Sunday, September 10th, for example, week three, right? So all the different ways to just kind of remember what week you're in and what we're doing. <laughs> um, and so this is week two, you know, read chapter one, read the lecture notes, attend the live Zooms, and then your homework is chapter one, right? And there is a week two discussion that's optional. Uh, notice homework and quizzes are due by Sunday midnight. You have unlimited tries at each problem on the homework, two attempts on the quizzes. After Sunday, the homework and quizzes are accepted with the late penalty up through December 10th. Okay. So hopefully not a big penalty where you don't want to do it anymore, but hopefully still a penalty so you try to keep on track, right? Not just put it off. All right. So each week there's a module with all your weekly info, right? We've already seen the announcements page. Okay. And then we've looked at Alex. And so just to get started, to summarize, there's the three steps, reading the syllabus, familiarizing yourself with the schedule, creating your Alex account, and then clicking on the modules and going to week one. Okay. We're going to be using the gradebook in Alex also. So let's see. Probably need to log in again. I 
I'll go into the student view. Okay, so up here in your menu, there's your grade book, okay? So you can see the grading policy, you can view assignments individually, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is where your grades will be. And you could see like homeworks weighted 50%, et cetera. Okay, so there's that. And then I just wanted to share a bit about me. I had a question earlier about how long I've been teaching. So get to know your professor, right? Um, starting way back my childhood, um, I grew up mostly homeless. And again, I know there's quite a large percentage. I have heard Statistics like 10% nationwide of college students are either homeless and or food insecure. I'm not sure what current studies show, um, but I grew up pretty much my entire childhood homeless and food insecure. And we just randomly traveled around the United States. Um, we lived in every single contiguous state in the United States except Washington State up here. Um, we primarily just stayed in hotels and motels and um, was not, you know, a military family or anything. Um, my dad, God rest his soul, and I love him to death and everything, but um, it's a little crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, we were just constantly moving. An idea of what my school was like. I didn't go to preschool or kindergarten at all. I did first grade two weeks in Maine. I didn't do any second, third, or fourth grade. Um, fifth grade, I did three months in Massachusetts. Didn't do sixth grade, right, et cetera, et cetera. You can see. As time kind of rolled on, you know, when I got older, I did more school. <laughs> uh, my only complete year of, you know, school was in 11th grade, my junior year. So by the time, you know, I was really in high school, we were primarily in Las Vegas. Even though like I did one day of my freshman year in Phoenix and a couple of months in Reno, you know, we kind of migrated out to the West Coast and, you know, just out West. Um, I ended up dropping out of high school just because I couldn't take it anymore. We were going to move again. And I'm like, you know, in, in high school, your credits count, and I wanted to go to college. Um, so I stayed in Vegas and got a job, and then eventually moved to California, and I graduated um, with my diploma from Torrance in South Bay. So, um, you know, I, I share all of this because I know a, a lot of you guys, um, you know, have rough backgrounds also. And I want you guys to know that it's possible to still reach those dreams and be successful and get your college degree. You know, I feel like if I can do it, anyone can do it. Because I used to look at people in college as, you know, having those like perfect childhoods and the prep schools and, you know, tutoring and, you know, their parents paying for college and all of that. I had none of that. Okay, none of that. And I was still able to do it. And these days, um, it's even become better. You know, community colleges, like I didn't even know there was such a thing as financial aid. <laughs> so, you know, we do a better job of letting students be aware of resources and things uh, now. So you guys have it better. Um, most of my you know, undergrad was done at Fullerton College. So I also went to community college, just like you guys. Um, and then I transferred to UCLA and I got my bachelor's of science in astrophysics. And um, mostly that was a quest of, you know, like, is there a God? Why are we here? If God created the universe, I wanted to study the universe to learn about God. But, and I was just also fascinated with 
you know, kind of everything. And that seemed like the biggest kind of subject to study. And um, during my bachelor's, I had to take a lot of math and, you know, all my love for math from when I was little kind of was sparked again. And I went on and did my master's in math at Cal State Fullerton. And then um, I was teaching during my master's, which is very, very common to have a teaching assistantship. And I love teaching. And so, you know, I, I, for me, it's part of like giving back as well. And, you know, like you guys, I feel like are my peeps, my people, you know, and um, yeah. So I wanted to focus on becoming a professor and I did my PhD in math education at the time, Florida State really had one of the very, very best math ed programs. So I know it was far away, but, um, you know, I'd lived in Florida. My dad at the time, right before then, had lived out in Florida uh, with my stepmom and then their house burned down. But um, that's another whole story. But yeah, so I did my PhD there. And then I came back. I actually commuted back and forth when I was at Florida State. You know, I came back here and I worked at Cal State Long Beach for about 10 years. And then I've been here for 10 years. Um, fave job ever. <laughs> Love it here. Love all the students. And um, yeah. And then kind of more on the personal side. Um, and I am married and I have three grown kids and stepkids. I try not to share, you know, personal pictures of other people, but so I have my cat. <laughs> uh, that's Bruiser, and I'm sure you'll be hearing him probably coming out meowing at some point this semester. And I love snowboarding. I do martial arts. I've recently taken up paddleboarding, which I love. Um, I don't even know. Oh, that's part of that picture. You know, I'm. I just love all kinds of sports. Um, thanks. <laughs> I'm also vegan. So I have some, you know, that's a big part of my life. Probably the thing I'm most proud of, you know, even more so than um, my education. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, yep. I'm a huge animal lover. And um, I'm Jewish. Here I am chanting um, at my bat mitzvah. I, I did a b'nai mitzvah with a group of adults because I never had the chance to do that as a child with all the moving around. So one of the things I've kind of done is tried to, um, you know, you can't really make up for stuff you missed, but um, I've tried to put things in my life that, you know, I didn't have a chance to do when I was a kid. So hence, um, do I have anything? I also play cello. I have no pictures of that. I love Halloween. So yeah, <laughs> I used to proudly walk around campus in all kinds of uh, costumes every Halloween. Um, this Halloween does fall on a class day, I think this semester, we'll have to see. I'm still known to dress up on Zoom. Um, and just some kind of final, you know, thoughts on my philosophy and, you know, teaching, um, you know, that really touched me because I feel like, especially in math, I've talked to so many students, I've done research, um, and so many adult students carry this shame with them that was kind of imposed on them when they were children. Oftentimes it starts in junior high school and people remember the precise moment when maybe a teacher called on them to do a problem at the board and they didn't know how to do it or, you know, just made fun of them made them believe they weren't smart because they can't do math. You know, I've heard thousands probably of stories. Um, so I hope this for you will be, if you have any of that kind of background, a place to heal 
that shaming and to validate that that was wrong and to progress and grow beyond that because you can all do this. I'm like almost in tears right now because it's, you know, I mean, it's great to get your education and like get a job and everything, but all of this stuff to me is like so much more important in the sense because it's all about our like self-identity and our esteem and um, that really touches our whole lives and who we are and who we become and who we are role models for, you know? So, um, yeah, I've, I've talked to people who delayed going to college for years and years because of some of these types of experiences. And they believed from, you know, the time they're 11, 12 years old, that they're stupid, that they can't do math. They'll never amount to anything. Um, you know, you'll never go to college. You'll, all of those kinds of horrible things. Um, and it's hard, you know, sometimes I think as an adult, like maybe intellectually, we might think that's not true. I could probably do it or whatever, but that's different than I think the more emotional, it's almost like that inner child side of, you know, you know, just not truly believing it. You know, so that's why, like, even on my syllabus, I, I really want you guys to know that you all belong here, that you all can really do this. And, um, you know, I want you to start, if you've, you know, had any of these past experiences, to really start taking those even tiny chances of asking questions, of even just within yourself, having an open mind that maybe you can do it, you know, because sometimes I think people will take a class and within themselves, they're like, I'm never going to pass this class. I'll do it. Like I'll, I'll enroll, but you know, I'm no good at math. I'm not a math person. I'm not going to be able to pass this class. And so I, if you have any of those thoughts, I'm encouraging you on day one to say, hey, wait a minute, Dr. Ward believes in me here. I'm going to just try it. I'm going to, because once you think you can't do something, it just makes it that much harder, you know? So if you really just allow yourself that possibility, um, I hope you will be genuinely surprised. I know you can do it. So, yeah. See, I get all emotional because really this is all like why I'm here. I'm like totally in tears. <laughs> um, it's really, you know, about your whole journey. It's not even about like, why do I need math? And, you know, all of that, right? Um, challenge yourself. You can do math. You can do anything. So the next thing, and I'm going to keep coming back to all of this all semester, you guys. Um, I found my bachelor's degree like the hardest of all my degrees. You might think the master's or the PhD, but no, the bachelor's, not because of the coursework, but because of life stuff, you know, being homeless, not being able to eat, you know, I remember starting out with a car and my car would break down and I had a boyfriend. That's a whole other story that was not a good relationship and I would move. And, you know, there were all of these kinds of life things that made my bachelor's very hard. It took me eight years to get my bachelor's. Um, so it got easier. And, and I just want to say to graduate school, really is, I believe, in general, easier. So if you haven't thought about, hey, maybe after I get a college, my, my bachelor's, I'll get a master's. I want to encourage you to start thinking about that because you guys can all get your graduate degrees too. And um, it's way easier. You, you know, full-time as an undergrad, like at this school and most schools, it's 15 units, right? 
full-time as a graduate student, usually nine units. You're in smaller classes. Uh, you, you know, it's just so doable. You're, you know, you have so much support from like, you really get to know your professors and um, yeah. There's um, financial support. Most schools, if they accept you in a graduate program, they're gonna have money to pay you a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship, and you'll get a tuition waiver. So for me, that was like the first time I felt like I, I was actually making some money and like I could eat and survive and you know afford to live. Um, and still be a student, which is the bomb, right? I also want to say, you guys, this is in America. You know, there are so many places around the globe where they don't have these opportunities. So I hope you will take advantage of and think about these opportunities. And I'm telling you right now, I'm pointing, you can go to Harvard. Columbia, Stanford. You can also go to Long Beach State. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying sometimes people don't apply somewhere else because they think they won't get accepted. Had plenty of students get accepted at all these different schools. They just didn't think they could really get in. And um, so I'm challenging you to open your mind to that too and just think about it. Just think about it. You never know. Okay. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with not doing it, but I'm just saying. Okay. Let it be like your choice. Like, hey, I can do that, but I'm choosing not to. That's fine. You know? All right. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> See how I can just chit chat. We don't even have to talk about math. Um, I'm gonna put you guys in some breakout groups so you can talk to one another. And um, I'm gonna have you guys just introduce, just so you meet some other people in class, you know? And some things you can like talk about, like introduce yourself. Oops, I'm gonna put this in the chat here. Like give your name or if you're not comfortable, like a nickname. I've had, some people not want to share, and that's okay. Uh, what's your major or career goals? I hope you guys are dreaming big. Um, any role models and why? And so I'm just going to give you guys a few minutes, but if you're still looking for time to, or, you know, things to talk about because you have time, you can share what is something boring about yourself. Um, you know, oftentimes we share something interesting about ourselves, and that can be uh, scary <laughs> to try and find something. <laughs> um, but I like asking you guys to share something boring about yourself because it takes the pressure off. And, you know, I mean, it could be something like, for example, um, during like the first two years of COVID. I probably wore nothing but shorts. <laughs> How about that? That's just, you know, I wear flip-flops like every day. Even when I'm face-to-face -face wearing a suit, I'm probably in flip-flops. Just something boring. I like, I have a particular way of making my PB&Js like really fussy. Like the ratio of peanut butter to, <laughs> that's funny, Elizabeth. Um, ratio of peanut butter to jelly, I'm really fussy about. So, you know, whatever, just something silly. Okay, so let me see. How many people do we got? We've got uh, 35. I'll put you into some breakout rooms. And and um, so please, you know, have a chat. It might be a good place to, you know, find a study partner if you wanted, you know, ask, maybe exchange phone numbers. You don't have to, but I'm just saying, okay? 
and um and we'll come back in maybe three four minutes okay let's get we'll we'll come back at 11 40. all right so you'll join